Cities, London Industrial Development Zone will launch its Science and Technology Park this morning. The new Science and Technology Park will help increase that competitiveness of the Eastern Cape in the technology industry while contributing to the economic development of the province. The Technology Park will also serve as a platform where young people in the industry can develop their ideas and market their businesses. Now, for more on this, we cross live to our SABC reporter, Owetu Sota. Owetu, good morning to you. And can you take us through what is happening currently in East London this morning? Good morning and welcome to the East London IDZ where the Minister of Science and Technology has just opened the Science and Technology Park officially, Dr. Nale Dipando. Now, one of the key objectives of, of this park is to actually offer innovators from the Eastern Cape a platform to develop their ideas while also um, giving technology skills to young people from, and, uh, from this area and um, also around uh, the Eastern Cape at large. Now, to talk to us more about this program, we are joined by the Executive Director in the East London IDZ, Mr. Tando Quinza. Um, Mr. Quinza, welcome. Can you just you. briefly tell us, um, this is the first science centre um, in, in, that is linked to an IDZ in the country. Can you tell us why the East London IDZ actually decided to embark on this, on this um, initiative? Thank you very much. Um, uh, at the beginning of the um, industrial development programme, we were given various objectives. One of those objectives was uh, the development of uh, skills and uh, the inf infusion of uh, <coughs> technologies. Um, and, and this was a, a difficult feat to, to undertake. And, uh, we, we then uh, uh, utilized the Science Park platform as a means to achieve that objective. And the, the, the platform really is a collaborative platform. It works on open innovation where there's more collaboration between academia, government, communities, um, as well as business um, in, in a helix form so that we share ideas and we develop uh, ideas uh, for, for solution provision. Yes. Now you're talking about the involvement of communities. Now we know the Eastern Cape is, is a vast uh, rural area. How is the idea that going to ensure that people in, in those areas are actually part of this uh, program? Yeah, in, in two ways. First, uh, there would be beneficiaries in terms of uh, products that come uh, from here. But one interesting thing about innovation is that, you know, the very rural people have their own innovation systems. We need to tap into those innovation systems and make them visible and celebrate those innovation systems and perhaps uh, commercialize those innovation systems. So, it is important from that point of view that they are also brought in so that we can actually solve the problems of the communities using an innovation platform. Now, talking about skills um, development in the area, we know that the Eastern Cape is about four tertiary institutions mm. of higher learning. We've also got a number of FETs. Mm. Is the idea that going to be working with those institutions and also um, um, other high, places like high schools mm. in order to involve young people in these mm. programs? I, th I think uh, the uh, institutions of higher learning are crucial to the uh, triple helix or the collaboration platform. That's the any, uh, knowledge generators. The idea is to bring the knowledge generators in touch with the knowledge users. So for this to work, we have to uh, have collaboration uh, with these uh, institutes of higher learning so that we also uh, close the link between what industry requires and what these institutions are producing so that we also try and deal with the skills uh, gap that we have which is basically a disparity between what we produce and what uh, is demanded by the market. So we're bringing those two closer. So it is part and parcel of the triple helix. Lastly, Mr. Queensa, can you just tell us um, how this entire project is going to benefit the economy of the Eastern Cape? As, as we all know, um, it, it, it's like growing perhaps your, your garden of uh, vegetables. You have to have a very small patch where you start growing you know, your seedlings. Uh, and you nurture those seedlings uh, before you transform them into the bigger market. This is supposed to do that. And as we know, um, the small industries generate more employment because of their growth potential through, through, through their life cycle. So we believe 
first of all, we will create more jobs, but secondly, we'll anchor some of our technologies and, uh, and, and perhaps become competitive internationally so that uh, we have our own technologies that are developed um, here in, 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 in the Eastern Cape in South Africa. Thank you very Thank much. You. Um, now, um, this uh, centre already has two prototypes. One of, one of them is um, a refrigerator that reproduces heat, but also there is a 12th street light. Now joining us is Nicholas uh, Jankovic, who is one of the innovators who developed this um, 12th uh, street light. Uh, Nicholas, welcome. And can you just briefly tell us, how does this uh, street light work? I'm very pleased to uh, announce the launch of the Twirly Street Light. Um, just behind me here, you probably see it over my shoulder. We have a completely off-grid street lighting solution, which has Wi-Fi capabilities as well as surveillance camera capabilities. For the first time in the Eastern Cape, we've managed to partner with our academic partner, who is the Nelson Meta Metropolitan University, the NMMU. Uh, and uh, we've now developed a street light that is run completely off the grid with a vertical axis wind turbine, uh, which generates power, as you would know, from uh, wind, uh, as well as a solar panel, which generates power from the sun. There's two batteries inside it, uh, which harvests that energy and stores it. Uh, currently, we're getting a, a whole night of light, which is fantastic, and in most instances, uh, up to 16 hours of continuous light from uh, both having the hybrid environment with the vertical axis wind turbine as well as the, the PV panel. So we're very excited about the launch of the Twirly here at the Science and Technology Park in East London. And uh, I feel that it being off the grid and not having any cable attached to a street light is going to improve the lives of many people in the rural areas. And not only in rural areas, in, on golf estates or wherever street lighting or lighting is needed. And more importantly, um, as I was uh, explaining to the minister, is that you know, by putting a Wi-Fi hotspot into it with an, a, a, a range, uh, children no longer have to sit under trees and learn, they can sit under the twirly and learn because the data stream onto iPads into the future uh, will allow all of our people in the country to be educated on, on a, symbol, sing, a single platform. So there's a couple of very exciting innovations that are coming from uh, just the, the manufacture of the twirly streetlights. And uh, yeah, we're very excited. All right. Nicholas, can you just tell us the importance of, of such centres um, for, for, you know, for, for young and old innovators around the Eastern Cape? Um, critical. Uh, the, a centre like this, we can draw on all of the expertise from the Science and Technology Park. I think what's most important for entrepreneurs that are out there is funding. And uh, if funding becomes available, uh, and, and, you know, the Science and Technology Park and the IDZ, they were uh, big enough to back us and uh, put us on the map as far as, you know, the funding that we received in order to, um, to build the first two prototypes. And we're ready now to go to, to commercialization. Thank you very much. Well, that is all we have from the East London IDZ at the moment. Um, it's back to the Jobex Studios.